smart, isn't she great? I knew her when summer was her crown. First play of the day. I'm curious to see if that little snippet is enough to bother the copyright police. How you doing? It's Monday, the 8th of August, and it's about 9 in the morning, having my second cup of coffee, and um, sometimes I wake up with music in my head, and this was in my head this morning. Don't know why. Zombies, Odyssey, and Oracle. Uh, U.S. pressing here. Great pop album. It just lightens my mood. I like the arrangements. I like everything about this. It just allows, it lets me mentally do what I go where I would like to go inside my head to start my day. How are you all doing? You know, some of you folks who actually tell me how you're doing, I read it. It's good to know that, you know, if you need to tell somebody, you can tell me. I don't have to converse with you, but you can tell me if you're okay or not. Because you are important, hopefully to yourself, but you're important in your life matters. So, a few things. Um, good morning, family. Stephanie, I know you watch. I just... Um, that warms my heart to know that we have this connection. I hate that we're so far away. You know, I have no uh, desire to move out of Omaha. So, I, it, yeah, I hate that we live so far apart and just can't get together and sit around when we want to. Because that's all it would be. You know, if we lived together, we wouldn't be in each other's house all the time. But just being able to come over would be so nice, wouldn't it? It would be. So speaking of that, let me um, see if I can, uh, there it is, okay, so we'll uh, start incorporating music and records showing with what I'm talking about. This is the Indrima album, do some of you people have this, Indrima, when did this come out? 2016 or something like that this is an album an album it's a band that I was in but it's also a project that I did in con conjunction with Connor Oberst's label team love my label and D and team love hooked up to um, release this album um, primarily by my my good friend and really partner in many ways of in crime and art Nick Fackler I'm bringing this up because Nick stopped by for a visit <clears throat> yesterday, and we had been needing to catch up. He's been very busy. He just got back from Italy, and then he was in Switzerland, and he's working on some new projects, some new films, a documentary about um, the, the medicinal um, use of psychedelics and the um, serious professional effort worldwide to get that recognized. Um, I feel very blessed. Um, I'm going to close this. I see that light is a bit much. There we go. That's better on the contrast, okay? Right? I feel really blessed to be involved with so many um, talented people. But I also had to tell Nick as we were watching the uh, roughs of his, his latest documentary, you know, yeah, yeah, I'm a bit jealous, to be honest. Um, our friend Sam Martin is doing the music for the documentary. It's amazing, you know, and it's like he's doing stuff that I, I don't know how to write like that, but still, you know what I'm saying? I was just to be honest to Nick, you know, you know, but I have nothing to complain about. So that was energizing. And that was a big part of yesterday, hanging out with Nick, catching up seeing his work and just enthusing about things so thanks folks for your input and suggestions um 
as I said, I'm a loner, and part of, part of that is because I really am the kind of person who, well, I like to decide for myself what to do. Of course, we all take input, but I'm more, much more likely to do, to do things when it's my idea. And I'm actually the sort of person who will, um, if somebody else says, well, you should do this, I won't do it. I'm just letting you know, okay? So this is in reference to people making suggestions. You know, I, I've i got a list already of, of what I'd like, of who I'd like to approach. And I have a method of how I do it. I trust my instincts. I'm serious, okay? So, with regard to Eric's suggestions, um, one of those people is, is a friend of mine, Dagmar Krause formerly of Henry Cow, Art Bears, and many other things. And we have talked. So when it feels right, I'll contact her. As far as pursuing contacts for other musicians, I'm not interested in that, no. I like the way this is happening. It's just happening, you know what I mean? So with that in mind, yesterday I decided that I would contact Dave Anderson. It felt right. Okay, I also need to explain, I've me never met Dave Anderson, but we have been friends on Facebook for years now, and we are definitely in alignment with regard to our concern about humanitarian issues. Um, we both vibe, you know, at our outrage at world, world politics and governments, and some of the madness so in that sense he, he feels like a friend so when I contacted him and just dropped the idea you know I'd love to talk about your music history I said, yeah I'd love to he's gonna get back to me next week because he's traveling right now as I mentioned Dave Anderson was the original bass player or one of the original bass players in Ammon Duel 2 Hawkwind it also turns out that he was in the band Groundhogs, but but also of great importance and interest to me is he built a studio back in the 70s called Fowl in Lanfair Carinian over, I think, in Ireland or Wales. I have a personal connection, a friend of mine who actually was in Wales or England at the time and actually worked as a laborer on Dave's studio very interesting how these things and when he came back back in the 70s all he could talk about was Dave Anderson and Lanfair Carinian so I intend to um, see if he even remember, remembers this person but his studio and he as an engineer I know I'm talking a lot I haven't shown you records his history is amazing he's worked it with everyone besides the bands he's played in but he's recorded everyone from the fall to my bloody Valentine Scritti Politti, he's worked as an ill engineer on some of the, I've got probably hundreds of records he's worked on. Gilgamesh, Van de Graaff Generator, Essential Law Logic, Young Marble Giants, The Pop Group, Delta Five. I mean, it's like, it's actually, when I look at his list of um, credits as an engineer and um, it's like, wow, you know, wow. Um, even Alexis Corner, um, Tangle Edge, Attila the Stockbroker, wow, New Model Army, just it just goes on, you know. Porcupine Tree have recorded at his studio. So there's a uh, Napalm Death, shit, you know, what a CV. So I'm glad that he's interested in talking, and this will be very interesting. I think, anyway, to ask him about all this work he's done and people he's met in his life. Very interesting to me. So, there's that. And, um, I hope to hear from Richard Barbieri this week. If I don't hear from him by midweek, I am going to just drop, you know, a little message in, me in um, Messenger. Again, I go by instinct. I'm saying that, but when the time comes, if it doesn't feel like I should do it, I won't do it, okay? Okay. So, 
yesterday I dropped back down to homers because they got in homers um, and grapefruit records fairly regularly do on Instagram like a lot of record shops now they do updates and show you what's in the news section what's in the new what's new in the used section so yesterday in their update I saw this the day before I saw some ambient albums and I called to see if they were there and they were gone already so when I saw this yesterday morning I didn't even call it just thought to myself I'm just gonna go down there and see if it's still there because this was early in the morning it was like within the first hour of the store opening and I thought myself my chances of this being there are good the other ambient albums I'm in competition with other people I actually know who some of the people are who are buy the same stuff that I do uh, in the youth section you know we're rabid but this is Magna Carta an English folk band that I like nothing real ground breaking or earth shaking but I, I like the band but I also love the vertigo label vertigo always interests me this is a very nice um, cover that folds out you know almost you know that's pretty cool and I thought to myself when I went down and it was still there I figured it's probably a spaceship vertigo which is fine but it's one of these and I love these and it's a UK now this is not in the high range price wise of vertigo collectibles which is not the point for me personally I really love the label and the way that they just their whole approach so anytime I'm able to grab a you a vertigo reasonably I get them and this is good this is mellow this is how I started my day yesterday and um, mellow is the right word it's very tuneful and pretty it's pretty music Magna Carta so while I was there they had two more things that caught my interest in the use so I grabbed them opus one is a label that seems to have um, connections to classical and contemporary classical music and um, I don't have very many of them but the label is always interesting and s educational really there seems to be a direct connection between the label and education so uh, they had this album the black earth percussion group and when I looked to see wh what who they were doing on here um, compositions by Lou Harrison Mario Bertoncini and John Cage among others I said yeah that's that's going home with me and this is really excellent percussion music look it up and listen to it online it's online it's on YouTube this is really good so sort the of, sort of thing I'm always looking for and then this was there in the used section I'm not a dedicated fan mainly because they, they do so much music I can't keep up with it and it's what they're doing is not a prime interest but they have my attention and I know that they're good so when this was in used I grabbed it King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard funky ass cover um, infest the rat's nest man I really like this I have one other album by them forget the name of it um, I like this better than the other one I have this one played I played this all the way through twice this year. It's like wow I really like this kind of um there's a heaviness to it but there's also this what it, what's interesting about this band to me is how they really just seem to be able to come up with riffs and ideas and, and unending it's like that's pretty impressive to me and then also it's nice split color vinyl plays great really a good album so I added those to the collection yesterday and I bought one more it's a new release of old stuff I didn't like the price 
was expensive, but I thought to myself, you know, I'm, I had seen it when I went down the other day and had to pass on it because of the price. But I've been obsessing about it since then, and it's like, I, I want to get this record. And um, so I did. Tim Turn Abbey, B-Side the Anthology. Some of you all know right away about this, this band and this record. They put out one single called Vacuum Cleaner and B-Side on the Duram label. Another of those labels that I love, there it is. I'd love to collect them all. I mean, that would be a lot of records, but I just love the aesthetic of Duram and how the labels were kind of chasing each other's tail in the 60s regarding psychedelia and youth culture, you know, with Vertigo and Duram and Harvest and some and the Penta and some other really cool labels. So this has the, I finally have it on vinyl, those two songs, because I've had them on download forever, because you can't find those, the copies of the single are really rare. And the rest of this are demos. And um, a lot of it is not very good, but it was worth it for to to get those singles on vinyl. And also, I couldn't tell when I bought it; didn't say anything. But it's on this nice, and then you can't see it. It's um, got this marbly, subtle marbly, two different shades of purple, violet, vinyl. Double album. So yeah, I'm not sorry I bought it. But overall it's like it's a collection of stuff that well yeah, I can see why it, none of this other material made it out. It's really not very good. Last thing I'll say about music is um another part of my uh, visit with Nick yesterday, who really is one of my very good friends. We don't spend a lot of time together, but he's like a family member to me. Um, I wanted to make sure and turn him on to some, some music before he went. He had not heard Black Midi yet. And I said to me, I said to myself, if anybody needs to hear Black Midi, it's my friend Nick. Pow! That was his response. I said, what? That was his response. He was like, Wow. This is jam packed. This is killer. Black Midi is is probably my favorite current young band of musicians. They kill it. I love what they're up to, and it was great to watch him react to it because again, Nick has high standard, you know, and he got it, and it just. Blew the top of his head off. It was fantastic to share it with him. So that's what's up today. Um, I spoke to... The, okay, I'm going to just keep going. I spoke to the record label over the weekend that I'm with. FPE. Um, I received uh, my... Uh, they're not royalties. That That's still... You know, royalties are still coming. I made my cut on my album Future Still. I got paid this weekend. I shared it with my sister because I was really frankly very blown away. This album has done really well and I was surprised at how much I made. I'm not saying, but it was... I said, really? No, I see now why the, these guys want to do another record. We made money. We didn't just make a couple hundred bucks. Thank you, people. That's the part I want to make sure I do. Thank you for getting on board with my art and music. What I do is what I do. It's who I am. It's as legit as anybody. It's not for everybody. But for you folks that are connecting with what I'm doing, thank you so much. I was blown away when I received my payment. I was. I wasn't expecting that much. I really wasn't. So I'm very happy. And it also made it 
possible for me mentally to go ahead and buy more records because I can. Cheers, everyone. Okay, let me stop there. Stay in touch, people.